Hello all, so if you remember in the last video we carried on working through our title page and we got a little title box up here which had some details about the exam which students would find useful. Now what I want to do in this video is actually put another box next to the box where we've got the title and things um, which has the total number of marks for the exam. Okay, so it'd be really useful to have the marks, the total number of marks that appear in the exam, then I can just simply handwrite how many marks those students have got. So if you remember the way which I defined this box here, where I have all the exam details in, I did it using a mini page. Now a mini page literally just separates the page up into however, however much I define. So in this case, I define it up to be 70% of the text width. Hence that box there is only 70% of the text width. So I'm actually going to carry on along the same line and I'm going to use up the rest of the page, which leaves 30% of the text width to play with. So I'll come down here to where I've got end mini page. I'll put a percentage to tell LaTeX that I'm not wanting to start a new line. I want to carry on along the same line and I'm just going to begin the next mini page. So I'll begin mini page. OK, now at this stage, I've got 30% of the text width. So I'll put curly brackets and I've got 30% of the text width still to play with. And obviously, I also need to end that mini page as well. So end mini page. OK, cool. So in here now, it leaves me room to put another T color box. Now, because again, I'm trying to put a T color box within a bigger T color box, which I defined right in the very first video of this uh, title page series, I need to put a TCB raster. So begin TCB raster. OK, and I also need to end the TCB raster as well. OK, fine. Now, actually, I'm just going to recopy uh, the same parameters which I've defined the TCB raster as as before. So I just copy that down to here. OK, fine. Now I'm in a position where I can actually create another T color box over here. So I'm just going to begin T color box. And obviously, I also want to end the T color box. Now, I'm actually just going to use the parameters which I used in the last T color box. I think that's fine. If you wanted to fiddle around with this to make it look slightly different, that is also fine with me. OK, you can customize this however you like. OK, so now I'm in a position where I can actually put stuff in my T color box. So the first thing I want to have is the mark along the top. So I'm going to put this in, I think I'm going to put it in huge font. So I'm going to begin huge. And obviously, I also need to end huge as well. OK, fine. And in here, I'm just simply going to have the mark. OK, so I'm going to make this bold and I'm just going to simply type mark. In fact, I'll put it in lowercase. OK, uh, just to save space and to make the code like slightly better or slightly neater, I'm just going to put all of this on the same line like so. OK, fine. Um, then what I want, so along the top, I've got mark. In fact, if I just recompile this, you'll see I'll have a T color box appearing over here, which is 30 percent of the text width, so the remainder of the width. And it's just got mark. Now, what would be quite nice if I then have a line, just like I had in this uh, T color box, horizontal line going across, then there's room to put stuff underneath. So to put a horizontal line in, I just go TCB lower. OK, and that will put a horizontal line in. And now I'm free to put stuff underneath. Now, I guess in this case, what I actually want to put underneath is the total number of marks for the paper. OK, so I want to leave a space and then have like out of the total number of marks that appear in that paper. OK, so to put a space, I'm just going to put this in a, um, just for laziness, I'm just going to put this in curly brackets. Uh, I'm going to make this H space star, and then I'm going to leave about 15 millimetres of space. I think that would work quite nicely. OK, so I'm going to leave a horizontal space, which is 15 millimetres. Then I'm going to begin huge, and I'm going to use a slightly different huge to what I was using before. I'm going to actually use it with a capital H instead. So lowercase huge and uppercase huge is different. So there we go, begin huge, and I also need to end the huge as well. OK, and then in here, I'm going to basically make in boldface font, uh, I'm going to go out of, so go forward slash, and then I want to make it out of the total number of points which appear in the paper. Now, fortunately, because I'm using add points, LaTeX can automatically add up the number of points which I've awarded, or the total number of marks that I've awarded for this paper. So I'll just go backslash and then num points. And that will basically give me the total number of points that appear across the entire paper. OK, so now if I click recompile, you can basically see that there'll be a text box that will appear, or a T color box over here. There'll be a line across, and it'll be out of 15. So there's 15 marks in the paper. So there'll be 10 marks on this page, and then there's another five marks here. So that works properly. Okay, and obviously if I change the marks, then it will update automatically. So that's really handy. Now just a couple of formatting things here. You notice that this T color box is just a little bit too far over. 
okay? It's just a little bit kind of too far over. I want a little bit more space in between the title and here. So the way which I'm gonna do this is actually using something called the adjust width. So I need to install a package in order for that to work. So I'll scroll right to the very top. I come up here to where I've used package. I'll go use package. And I wanna install the package change page. Okay, so I install the package change page. And what that will allow me to do, if I come down to where I've got my T color box, getting a little bit messy now, but yep, there we are. Okay, so here's my T color box. What that will basically allow me to do is basically adjust the width. So it'll basically allow me to move it either left or right really easily. So I'll just put, before I put TCB raster, so begin the mini page 30% text width, I'll now put a begin adjust width. All one word, okay? And obviously I also need to end the adjust width. Notice where I put the begin the adjust width, it's between the mini page and the TCB raster. So it needs to be down here to end it. So end mini page. So now if I, sorry, not mini page, adjust width, because that's what I've just opened. Okay, so now if I come back here to where I've said begin adjust width, it basically accepts two parameters or well, sorry, two inputs. So I need to put these in two sets of curly brackets. The first set of curly brackets is how much I wanna move things left and right. Okay, so how much I wanna move the beginning left and right. So I wanna move it in, if you have a look here, I reckon I just wanna move this in by about 10 millimeters. So I'll just go 10 millimeters here. Now the second parameter is how much I wanna move it in from the right, okay? So the first parameter is how much I wanna move it in from the left. Second input is how much I wanna move it in from the right. Now in actual fact here, I don't wanna move it in at all from the right. I think it's quite nice that it's in line with all the other boxes above. So I'll just put zero millimeters here. So now if I click recompile, what that'll basically do is just shift that box over to the left slightly by 10 millimeters. And I can obviously change, you know, different spacing as well to get it how it look, uh, to sort of change how it looks. I think this looks perfectly fine. I have let a little bit of space after the 15. That's just because sometimes I might have exam documents which are three figures, okay? So it might be, for example, out of 100, okay? So I just wanna leave a little bit of space just to make sure that that, uh, that number of points doesn't go outside the box at all, okay? But I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so one final little thing which I wanna do on this page, I wanna put a little custom footer along the bottom, okay? So I can come up to where I've got my, uh, my header and footer, which is in here, and I can actually put my own first page footer on the first page. So I go first page footer. Remember it accepts three inputs. Uh, the three inputs correspond to left, middle, and right. Uh, I'm not actually interested in anything in the middle, so I'll leave that blank, okay? Uh, on the left, what I'm gonna put is actually my web address, okay? So I've already got my web address up here. It's image web address, okay? So all I'm literally gonna do is just go include graphics. Oops, include graphics, okay. Uh, I'm gonna make the width of this, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do the width of this 30% of the text width. So I think that's the same as before. And then here, uh, yep, here with my second set of curly brackets, I'm just gonna use my web address image there. Okay, and actually if I come over here on my right, I'm gonna put another image. And the other image I'm gonna upload, so I'll just go upload, and I'll find my image. So I'm gonna use this one here, which is my icon for my channel. And if I just come here, that's gonna be image footer icon. So I'll come to my last set of brackets for my first page footer. I'll go include graphics, and what do I want? So I want the width to be, I want the width to be 0.1. So I'll make it 0.1, 10% of my text width, like so. And I also need to tell it what to include. So you notice now there's three up here, I want the image footer icon. So I think that will work. Now if I click recompile, okay, it should just basically put a nice little footer on the bottom there, okay, which it is doing. Now the only issue with that is it just looks a little bit too big. Uh, why is it doing that? Ah, because I haven't told it uh, that it needs to be width there. Okay, so that was just a mistake on my part. I just need that first, uh, that first footer, so that left-hand footer. I need to make it the width. So I need to sell it, I'm defining the width. Okay. So if I now make it width, it'll become smaller, it'll make it look nice. Okay, so that looks all right. Now the only issue with this, is it's a little bit too close to the bottom of the page. Um, basically, if I now try to print this, I need to leave a little bit of room for the print margin, otherwise that's definitely gonna get chopped off. So if I just come to the very beginning of this one, I'm just gonna define the V space, and I'm gonna make it negative, because I'm gonna move it up, okay? So I'll do V space, uh, and make it star as well. 
and how much should I move it up by? Uh, I think I'm going to move it up by maybe, yeah, maybe five millimeters. So I'll make it negative five millimeters. And I'll also move this icon up by about 10 millimeters. So I'll go V space, star, 10 millimeters. All right, fine, let's see if that works. And obviously you can play around with this, but you can see that basically you can move each one up separately. So yeah, that kind of works. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of that verse V space because I think that's screwing things up a little bit. So if I now just get rid of that, it should. Oh, I need to make that negative, don't I? Ah, there we go. So I need to make that negative. I'll just screw that up. So I didn't, I don't, wasn't actually bothered about that. Yeah, there we go. That looks a lot better. Okay, so I'll just move that up. And obviously you can play around with this. So if it's negative, it moves it up. If it's positive, it moves it down. Okay, but I think that's starting to look good. So that as a front page is starting to look reasonably good.